Conscious Arabia, and I'm here today with Manya from Manyati Initiatives. Hey, Manya. Hi, Valencio. Hey, thank you for being thank you for being here. Um, thank you for having me here. So I'd like to ask you about what you do. Um, right. Would you be able to briefly describe uh, Manyati Initiatives? Sure. Um, so Manyati Initiatives is a non-profit social development organization that supports communities in need. Um, so we partner with a local NGO, a grassroots organization, assess their need, and then we join forces and, and implement a project uh, together. So we work in the education, housing, and water sector. And um, we work in various countries, so we've, uh, we had projects in Nepal, in Pakistan, Brazil, Ethiopia, Sudan. So it's basically in, in, uh, in many countries, in different sectors, it's very diverse. I think what sticks through or what, what, what you can see in each project is that they're very tangible and measurable. So it's sewing machines or water well, low-cost houses. Um, it, it's you really we, we commit on very specific targets. Excellent, and uh, like so, if if you could go back to the start for a minute, um, what inspired you to, you know, start Manyati Initiatives and just get into the whole social good sector? Um, well, there was not a specific situation where you realize I have to create change. For me personally, it's a wish or pa passion that I have since I'm young. I think the challenge is, and I, from what I realized um, in those few years where I'm wor working on Manyati and the few years I was working in the social sector is that there are a lot of people who have um, the intention to do good and many times they just don't find an outlet for it, they don't know where to start. So for me the question was more to really just make this one decision to start with one, st one step or one project. So um, two years ago, um, uh, let's say four years ago, I've been on holidays in Nepal. I was visiting a school and orphanage, and mm -hmm. then two years later, I just asked them how we can help. Um, so when, when we started Monyet Initiatives, there was never a business plan around it. It's really just step by step, you, you do what, you, what, you, what you're passionate about, and, and then you just build it, and it, I'm sure things will develop, and it will become a proper uh, uh, project. And speaking of projects, um, mm -hmm. what are some of the projects that you've uh, done? Um, so I think, let me mention the two most exciting projects. Um, one was the setup of a vocational training center in Kashmir on the Pakistan side. <coughs> we teach women sewing, embroidery and basic marketing skills and when they finish the exam they get their own sewing machine. So they can set up their own small uh, business and they can stand on their own feet, they're independent. And so I like that project because it allows sustainability and it's really empowerment by, by uh, by giving them a skill mm -hmm. and by allowing them to have their own business. The other project, which was personally very interesting um, a personal experience, was when we built low-cost houses in the slums of Sao Paulo. Um, so these low-cost houses are built in two days. It takes six to ten volunteers. And the interesting part is that we really stayed in those favelas in the slums. We built it together with the families. We were sleeping in one of their slum schools. and. And you really learn what it means to live in poverty. You learn about the local challenges, and and that was very uh, that was a very valuable experience for me. And um, the houses are the, the organization I partnered with. It's a South American organization. The the concept they have is brilliant. So these mm -hmm. are like wooden houses, and they last for let's say about ten years. And for them, it's such a huge improvement because if you live in a slum anywhere in the world, you know yeah. they don't have proper homes. It's like flicked together and. Before we started constructing those houses, we went into their own old homes, homes and they, they share their own personal story. And, and so, you, so you really see the impact that you create within a couple of days, and that was very fascinating. Amazing. And uh, how, do you, how do you measure impact and um, what defines success? What, what does success mean to you? I mean, su success or impact, um, naturally you would say you count it by how many how, how many people you've reached out to, how many people you lifted out of poverty, but um, I think if you work in the social sector, the impact works on a much mm -hmm. uh, wider scale. So I think impact is measured, first of all, on two different areas. You have the impact for the receiver, the one who received the donation, but you also have an impact for those who give, and that's for me equally important. I think, especially living in the UAE, in the United Arab Emirates, you, I think many people are not aware of what it means to live in poverty and so when I do my social projects I always have volunteers who accompany us to those, to these, uh, for the project implementation 
and we are very transparent, we have a very detailed documentation of how the project uh, develops and I think if someone is already willing to give a financial contribution, the interest goes much more than uh, giving money. They want, really course, want to yeah. learn what does it mean to live in poverty, they want to have a dialogue. So for me, impact means both areas I need to create impact for the receiver and the giver and then of course Impact also means if you bring happiness to those people, you can't measure happiness, but that's, that's one of the crucial uh, impacts you want to create. And um, so moving forward, how would you like to see uh, Maniati initiatives evolve? Well, Maniati initiatives, um, maybe here um, there's an interesting aspect because Maniati initiatives by itself is not sustainable. So we mm -hmm. don't take any administration fees. Uh, each financial contribution that you receive goes only in the specific commitment that we're mm -hmm. running at the moment. And so in order for us to be able to continue those projects, we need to create a sustainable concept. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're working on a social enterprise, a social business that will market fair trade handicraft products that are produced by vocational centers in developing countries. Um, the little twist here is that we will link with various designers who will donate the design. So we will go to the vocational centers, we take the product and give the input on, on, on how to amend the design so it addresses the Western consumer. And um, in other words, it will be a social fashion platform. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we're just working on the first product. So we, have, um, we will have one in Lebanon, uh, Pakistan, India, and Palestine very soon. Fantastic. And so that should be exciting. That's ex excellent. And, and those, um, one thing, and so when we sell the product, 100% of the net profit will be given to Moniat Initiative. So you have different aspects. You have oh, the employment creation, you have the aspect that you give a global um, an, an outlet from for the local artisan to the international right. market. And then of course, the whole point why we do it is to finance Moniat Initiative. So 100% of the net profit will be channeled to Moniat Initiatives and Moniat Initiatives will then create social projects in the specific communities where the bag was produced. You really have a, a beautiful cycle. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and on that note, like, I would just like to say, you know, I hope you guys succeed and grow and continue to, to develop. And uh, the work that you're doing is fantastic. Thank and uh, everybody out there should check out Manyati Initiatives. And thank you, Manuel. Thank you very much, Valencio. <laughs>